In this episode of Viral Rewind, we're looking at an email worm on Windows called Melting Screen. Now, being an email worm, it obviously will come in through email, usually through Outlook or some other kind of provider you would have had back in the day. And you would have gotten a little message with some text, and then it would have Melting Screen attached to it. You would then end up running Melting Screen, it would run its routine of infecting the system and then it would attempt to mass mail itself to spread it around to other users. So I've got Outlook open here. Let's launch Melting Screen. And it gives us a little error here called Runtime Error with some kind of code in it saying that there must be at least one name or distribution list in the 2CC or BCC box. So that tells you right there that it's trying to mass mail itself because it's looking for some kind of information to mail itself with. So our mailing routine is not exactly going to work here, but it does attempt to do that. Now once Melting Screen runs, it does a few things to the Windows directory. Bring it up here. Scroll down. And you need to note that it has dropped this file called Melting Screen, so it has dropped the virus itself into the Windows directory. And it has infected at least two files. It's already infected Hardware Info, and also the Media Player. And if you note the file right next to it, it says mplayer.bin. And it's the same thing with Hardware Info.bin. So, Melting Screen essentially acts similar to a companion virus where it saves the original file with a different extension in case it takes the file name and puts .bin on it. But Melting Screen also behaves a little differently from a normal companion virus, and we're going to show that now. So if we try to run Hardware Info, see now it says it's looking for dosprep.bin. Interesting. If we go up to where DOSPREP was, see where it is. See, we've just replaced the CLS pack, so that's been replaced. Looking for DOSPREP here. Let's do a refresh. See, DOSPREP has now become the melting screen, and it's got dot .bin next to it. So let's try running dust prep. Okay, something else just got replaced. I see Dr. Watson just got replaced. So what you might be noticing here every time I run one of these files that's been replaced with melting screen is that it's actually launching a different application every time and subsequently infecting that application. See, this time I did a launch, it's infected the Microsoft Signature Verification Tool. I use the computer fan because there's some activity going on. Here's the Windows Reporting Tool. There's the script host settings. So what Melting Screen does, not only does it act similar to a companion virus making these .bin files of the originals that are getting infected, but every time a program is being launched here through melting screen through one of these infections, it's launching a different program. It changes the associations. So every launch of a program is actually launching something else. See, we just launched Calculator. So Calculator just got infected. And Control.exe for the control panel just launched. And the thing about Melting Screen, of course, its payload is based on the name of it, so we'll see that a little bit later. But the actual payload is not going to happen until Melting Screen has pretty much infected every executable file here in the Windows directory. So we're just going to keep going through until we infect all the files. See, now it's infected direct cable connection. There's Notepad. There's Paint. Is the registry editor. Scan disk. Occasionally we'll get some errors with some stuff that it may not be able to infect. Probably because those files are in use like Rundill and Explorer. The sound recorder. 
task manager. There's another runtime error. And the Windows. Welcome to Windows thing. I don't need this. So as I said, we're just clicking through, infecting more and more applications in the Windows directory with melting screen until we get the payload to trigger. Click this a bunch of times. System Manager. Oops. Not enough free memory to run this program. I guess I need to start quitting some programs. Now, obviously, because a lot of those programs got infected, if we try to launch the original program, you see, we tried to run Calculator, it brought up a different program. Try to launch Paint, it actually still brought up Paint. That's interesting. What about Notepad? Oh, see, it brought up Telnet instead. Try WordPad. Weird pet came up, so we still haven't quite infected everything. But we're getting there. That looks like some kind of stuff. Oh, and there is the melting screen payload. So we have pretty much eff effectively infected most of everything there that melting screen can infect, and now that it has reached that threshold we now get the melting screen payload. Now the interesting thing about this, if I press Alt F4 to close a program, it closes out melting screen, although melting screen just restarted. And again, and again. Or we can use Task Manager. Close melting screen like that. So the melting screen payload does not override everything on the system. It's basically a full screen graphical animation, almost like a screensaver from its behavior. And as you saw from using Task Manager, we could force quit melting screen. Again, we could also use Alt F4 to close out melting screen, although in some instances like we were just getting, it tends to restart. Now, if we try to run, pretty much any infected application from here on out. See, it will automatically launch the melting screen payload. And again, it's very similar to what a screensaver would do. It takes whatever was presently on the screen and does this kind of animation of the screen melting. Let it run here for a little bit. And you can see that my mouse cursor is still right there in the background, still working. So again, it, as I said, it doesn't override the system. It's kind of behaving more like a full screen animated screensaver. Now, if you wanted to get rid of this virus, basically you would need to go into the Windows directory and change... First of all, you'd have to get rid of all the infected .exe files that have the snowflake icon there of melting screen, along with the dropped melting screen.exe file in the Windows directory. And then you got to go in and change all those .bins back to .exes to restore the original applications. So... You can clean up after this virus, it's just it's going to be a little tedious because you got to go through and change all those dot .bins back to dot .exes and, of course, get rid of the infected executables while not accidentally deleting the good ones that are still on the system, like Explorer or Rundill or any of those that did not get infected in the first place. That's been running for a while. Let me force quit it. 
And of course, if you try to restart the computer, we can't restart either because Rundell32 is one of those programs that is affected by a melting screen and that handles stuff like trying to change the date and time or execute instructions for restarting the computer, shutting it down, etc, etc. So anytime you try to do that, it's also going to run melting screen. So our only choice is to force restart. Ooh, and I caused an internal stack overflow when I tried to force restart the computer. I'm coming back into Windows now. And it's complaining about the changes of some system files, and there goes the belting screen payload. So yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for the melting screen email worm.